leaders in the country to be peace ambassadors. Budget for more inclusive growth. And declining health services to be improved. This is the National MTV News with Mary Bartolo. A very good evening. Thank you for joining us for the first bulletin. It's the 1st of January 2018. Port Moresby police have completed 12 hours of their special New Year operations. During the operations, a homemade pistol was confiscated. Drunken citizens cautioned and sent home, and shops illegally trading liquor were ordered to close. This was one of the biggest police operations, which involved police officers from all eight police stations, the traffic, dog units, and the mobile squad directorates. The last 12 hours of this special operation for police in Port Moresby was epic. Though the eve of the new year fell on a Sunday, it did not stop people from the usual style of welcoming a new year in the nation's capital. Police were out on full force to ensure people celebrated the new year in the appropriate manner. The 12-hour operation began at 6 p.m. yesterday and continued into the night. MTV News teamed up with the Dog Unit Directorate, consisting of over 50 dog handlers, including bomb and drug specialists. They began the operation at selected hotspots where drugs are sold. Random searches were conducted on suspicious individuals and bitternut vendors were advised to stop their marketing before 10 p.m. last night. The operation continued with a number of food bits and inspections on the sale of liquor at Morata, NCC Valley and Garrow suburbs in the Mosby Northwest electorate. In Morata, a homemade pistol was confiscated. Just minutes after the new year, police patrolled the city again and removed burnt tires, old drums or parts of old vehicles which people had pushed onto the roads as part of the new year celebration. Between 12 and 1 a.m., no major crimes or accidents were reported to police except for alcohol-related fights. <laughs> However, around 3 a.m., a senior member of the mobile squad escaped what could have been serious head injuries after a huge rock was thrown at the vehicle he was driving. The police teamed up, caught the culprit, and dealt with him. The operations continued until 6 this morning, where a debrief was held to conclude the three long weeks of the security operation for the 2017 Christmas and New Year. Tekla Gunga, National MTV News. Six inmates of the Loranga Correctional Centre are on the run after they escaped for freedom during a volleyball tournament in Manus yesterday. Manus police reported that all escapees have been charged for serious crimes and are awaiting their trial hearings at the Loranga National Court. Provincial Police Commander Chief Inspector David Yapu has called for those harbouring the escapees to hand them over to police. The alternative government has given its well wishes for the implementation of this year's national budget. Finance and Treasury Shadow Minister Ian Ling Staki in his New Year message called on the government to strive for more inclusive growth and avoid protectionist policies which would hurt ordinary Papua New Guineans. Mr Ling Staki issued the alternative government's New Year message calling for a better government in 2018. In his message he warned Papua New Guineans to prepare to pay more as a result of the 2018 national budget. The Shadow Treasurer said the 2018 budget included major tariffs increases for hundreds of everyday products and as a result, PNG families and businesses would feel the pain of these price increases. He adds that the decision to increase tariffs on everyday food items as well as an increase in import duties on petrol and diesel would hit families hard this year. 
The opposition is predicting that milk prices will be above 6 kina per litre during this year because of a 25 percentage point increase in tariffs as a result of the budget. The alternative government understands agriculture is the future for PNG and they are of the view that the country can be the farm for the rapidly expanding Asian region. Mr Lingstaki adds that what the country needs is international competition to expand our markets instead of protectionist measures that harm businesses. He is of the view that PNG businesses need to grow with their vision on the market shelves of the Indo-Pacific region. Furthermore, the alternative government is of the view that the country's future market should be aligned with this hope of cheaper costs of living and higher incomes for the people of PNG. The alternative government has wished the government all the very best in the implementation of the 2018 national budget, calling for a more effective government over the next 12 months of 2018. Here with National MTV News, we go for a break now and be back with more after these messages. Stay tuned. Welcome back to National MTV News. It's a new year for businesses as they focus on more growth. Looking back, 2017 was tough, forcing a lot of businesses to downsize their operations. However, this also provided an opportunity to innovate. 2017 has been a rather difficult year for businesses in Papua New Guinea. All across the country, businesses from all sectors have had to deal with a slowdown in the overall economy. Much of this attributed to the lack of access to foreign currency, a result of a trading ban on foreign currency which has been in place since mid-2014. However, this has also provided an environment for businesses to innovate. This year saw the superannuation funds come of age with the major players NAS Fund and Number One Super undergoing significant changes with both superannuation companies going digital. For NES Fund, 2017 will be remembered as a catalyst for more positive growth with the superannuation fund migrating to a fully automated system. Through their new fund administrators, Kina, a switch to a digital platform was realized in the final quarter of the year much to the delight of its contributors around the country. By the 1st of December, all superannuation contributions to NAS Fund would have been automated, fulfilling a key focus area that the board and management of NAS Fund had set out to achieve in 2017. Number One Super also celebrated 2017 in style, with their members receiving a 9% interest on their contributions. In September, the government's shares in oil search were divested with Kumul Petroleum Holdings Limited selling off the 31.3 million shares at a reported value of 19 kina 60 per share, significantly lower than what was paid to acquire these shares in the year 2014. According to media reports, the state had lost around 700 million kina from this deal, a deal which had been controversial from the very start. The agriculture sector has also been one that has been in the spotlight this year and for the right reasons. An industry that has enjoyed a positive 2017 has been cocoa. 2017 saw the staging of the inaugural Coco Warwagira in Kokopo, East New Britain province, representing an avenue for cocoa farmers from around the country to be recognized for their efforts. Following the formation of government after the national general elections, Agriculture was given priority in the second Alatau Accord, placing emphasis on this key sector going forward. In light of this, the sector hosted the inaugural National Agriculture Summit to gauge the views of private sector on how to go about reviving agriculture in the years ahead. In November this year, the national government handed down the 2018 national budget. Framed against a backdrop of declining economic growth and within a very tight fiscal environment, a deficit budget was handed down as expected. Under the 2018 national budget, total income including grants is set at 12.7 billion kina, whilst total expenditure including capital expenditure is set at 14.7 billion kina, a deficit of 1.9 billion kina, which according to Treasurer and Deputy Prime Minister Charles Abel, it is still within the legal limits. But as always, challenges remain, especially in regards to how these plans are implemented and according to the Institute of National Affairs, the performance of the public service will need to improve in a big way if the government's plans have any chance of being realised. The government's saying, hey look, we want to set the right conditions, but at the same time clearly 
um, within government they're also trying to pick some winners and uh, and select certain uh, not just set the conditions for agriculture but actually pick some winners in there by uh, imposing some tariffs on uh, on import. The tough economic conditions are expected to continue in 2018. However, there is hope that given the impending hosting of APEC, PNG can take advantage of the opportunities that are on offer when PNG plays host to the leaders of the world's biggest economies. As 2018 begins, there must be stronger family ties and for the need to combat loneliness by renewing physical rather than virtual contact and families must be nourished with the word of God. This report from Fabian Hakalitz. The upbringing of a child begins in a family as the foundation. Based on these principles, the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Papua New Guinea and the Solomon Islands has called for the promotion of more values. I call upon the parents to give good family values to the children because when we have good families, we have a good country. Especially in this challenging time with the advancement of modern technology, parents have been urged to provide a more practical parental care. That we go for. Uh, and, and I think we are experiencing that uh, here in PNG right now. Fabian Hakelitz, National MTV News. You're with National MTV News. We'll go for a break and be back with more after these messages. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the news. It's a joy for some families with welcoming 2018 with new members to their families. In this new year, 18 bundles of joy were born at the Port Mosby General Hospital. Our crew also caught up with some citizens around Port Mosby to get their hopes on what they begin will happen in 2018. 18 New Year babies are bundles of joy for families. The first baby delivered, a girl, was born at 1 this morning to proud parents, Sonia and Paulson from Borogaina, Rigo District. First-time mother, 19-year-old Sonia, said it is a very beautiful New Year present for her family. In the meantime, the delivery of these babies brought joy to the family members. Shaini Tutenava with Uncle Hazard Laim visited their new family member. <coughs> Around Port Moresby, we caught up with Offa Matthew, community leader of Morata Gateway Community. She commended her community for a peaceful Christmas and New Year's celebration. Inside the community, we are not here we are travel come up for Christmas come New Year. Me look at community for me and me run good, it's stop good. Jerry Faimot, who is visiting Port Moresby from the Eastern Highlands, stated how impressed he was with the celebrations at Morata. Me come start and uh, me come November and me start December coming up uh, January first day today now. But me talk also now. Uh, Morata I want to uh, set uh, stay. Stage inside the most where Miss Avery story also and any place no good now. Plan the any place for rascal man to so uh, This period Christmas period me come start for Morata. Me no looking one for heavy come up. Let us continue to build a safer community for 2018. <laughs> Lilian Kinea, National MTV News. The dire need for more health services in areas outside of main towns and cities have forced pregnant mothers to leave their homes early before the actual delivery date. A concerned citizen, Lillian Hennepa, told MTV News the critical need for health services is important to address the high maternal health problem in PNG, and she hopes this problem will be resolved by authorities this year. We'll go for a break now and be back with more on the other side of these messages. Stay tuned. Kai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. We begin with Rugby Union and this year will be a hectic year for PNG Rugby Sevens with both the men's and women's national teams in the race against time to prepare for international competition. Pulled alongside top-ranked nations such as Spain, France, South Africa and Australia, 
National coaches Douglas Guys and John Larry are pushing their players to go the extra mile at training. National Men's Sevens team, the Pupoks, competed at only two events of the 2016-2017 World Series circuit, Wellington and Sydney. However, their future is looking a little brighter after qualifying for the 2018 Rugby Sevens World Cup. Get a win out of the pool stages, but in saying that, I feel as though we've got the quality of players that can really push for a quarterfinal spot. Yeah, but then again, again, like depends how we prepare over the next few weeks and get our boys uh, up for the tournament. Both the men's and women's PNG Sevens team qualified for the 2018 Sevens Rugby World Cup, a feat which could be the first of its kind for rugby in Papua New Guinea. The second time we've qualified for back-to-back -back tournaments uh, uh, with uh, last year we did the Sydney and the Wellington legs as well as Hong Kong this year we've got Sydney and now they've moved the Wellington to Hamilton as well as Hong Kong on top of that we've got the Commonwealth Games as well as the biggest the big uh, one cherry was the boys qualifying for the World Cup in uh, San Francisco and then again we come back to Fiji for the ocean here so it's a Big achievement for the boys uh, the, and the girls as well. They've both made the World Cup. Yeah. While the women's PNG Rugby 7's team, the Palais, only played at one event of the World Series 7 circuit in 2016-2017, the 2017-2018 season is shaping up as a critical time to improve. The, the older girls are, are knocking on the door, pushing me to, uh, and then some younger girls. It's hard uh, for me to select them when, when it comes down to the final 12. Uh, Gives me a very, yeah, the most of the girls I select, yeah, all, all of them can play. The Palais were ranked last at the 2017 Sydney Sevens. They're looking to make their way up the ranks this year to prove they deserve a core spot in the World Series. Uh, France is around, uh, uh, around 8 uh, and Spain is around 10. Uh, we are on, on the ranking, well, second, we're on the 14. Uh, we, um, We'll be looking forward to um, build where we left last year uh -huh, and then try to improve our rankings. The HSBC Sydney Sevens Championship will take place from the 26th to the 28th of this month. The Pupuks are in Pool C alongside South Africa, England and Spain, whilst the Palais are in Pool A with Australia, France and Spain. Shane Saroya, National, MTV Sports. And we'll be back with more of Trukai Sports after these messages. Trukai Sports. Welcome back to Trukai Sports. Still on rugby, preparations have been steady for the past six weeks since both the men's and women's national teams returned from the Oceania Rugby Sevens Championship. Book Book's coach Douglas Guys is urging corporate houses to get behind the national sevens teams, especially as they are the only Olympic team sport in the country at the moment. Because again, we are, I keep saying, we're the only Olympic team sport in PNG. Okay, the only Olympic. So there is always a cycle for this rugby sevens. Okay, and if we're looking at grasping the grassroots or the masses, I think rugby sevens is the way to go for our country to be playing sevens and to get all our kids playing rugby sevens because there's always a cycle for it. I mean, in 2020, you've got the 2020 uh, Olympics in Tokyo. You got the Commonwealth Games coming up, so there is always a big tournament for these kids. Huh? So if we can get more kids playing rugby sevens, we get the good corporate and government support. A lot of our kids playing sevens, I think we can really give a good um, challenge to these nations such as Fiji, New Zealand, Australia. And that's it for Trukai Sports. When we come back, the weather details for the first night of January. Stay tuned. Trukai Sports. True Kai Sports. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. A look at the weather forecast for the next 24 hours in the southern region. A shower or two expected in Popandeta with a top of 32. Fine becoming cloudy for Alata with a top of 32 as well. Mostly fine for Port Mosby and Daru with a top of 32. A top of 31 and mostly fine for Kerma in the Gulf province. 
to the Momasi region, mostly fine in Leh and Wau in Marbe province. A shower too expected in Madang, a few showers for Wiwek and Vanimo. To the New Guinea Islands region, mostly fine and a top of 32 for Kokopo, Rabao, Kimbe and Buka. A shower or two for Kavian with a top of 31, 31 as well, but some thundery showers for Longau. And in the Highlands region, thundery showers expected in Mount Hagen with a top of 24, a top of 24 as well, and brief showers expected in Goroka and Kondiawa. Brief showers with a top of 23 for Mendi and Wabek. To so look at the forecast for small ships for the next 24 hours, waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait and Daru to Kiwai Island, to Kerama, to Yul Island, Hood Point, Samurai Island, and with waters of Finchafen to Vidya Strait, Dempe Strait to Siasi Island, to Long Island, and with waters of Long Island to Medang, Bogia, Wiwek, Aitape, Vanimo, and the northern PNG Indonesian border, and with waters of Manus and its western group of islands, sea 0.5 to 1 meter. Waters of Eastern and Western Milne Bay Islands and with waters of Samurai Island to Cape Vogel to Finchhafen, sea 0.5 to 1.5 meters. And waters of New Island to New Britain to Bougainville, sea 0.5 to 1.3 meters. And a look at the ocean forecast for PNG areas. The Coral Sea sees slight to east to southeasterly winds at 10 to 50 knots. Solomon Sea sees slight to moderate with northeasterly winds at 10 to 20 knots. Bismarck Sea sees smooth with northeast to northwesterly winds at 5 to 10 knots. And the Pacific Ocean sees slight to east to northeasterly winds at 10 to 15 knots. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. Worth doing with Dulux. Before we go, 2018 is a crucial year for the autonomous region of Bougainville. It is during this year that the groundwork for the impending referendum on the region's political future must be completed. In his New Year message, Autonomous Bougainville Government President Chief John Momis has called for all stakeholders to work together to ensure that the final referendum outcome will be peaceful. With only 18 months left before the referendum on the political future of Bougainville, the Bougainville Peace Agreement must be fully implemented. This from Autonomous Bougainville Government President, Chief John Momis. In his New Year message, Chief Momis said that the decision to be an autonomous region was a privilege that was built on the back of a lot of suffering and is one that must not be taken for granted, especially during this festive season. He therefore called on all Bougainvillians to unconditionally support ABG efforts to create public and community awareness of the gains of autonomy and eventual independence, denounce all forms of corruption and mishandling of public funds, commit to dismantling all forms of barricades to unity, teach children and families the values of respect for the rule of law, contribute to cultivating the culture of self-sufficiency, hard work and sacrifice, partner with the ABG in uplifting the living conditions of everyone in Bougainville and giving the Bougainville Peace Agreement a chance to succeed. In ushering in 2018, Chief Momis has asked that all Bougainvillians stand together to rebuild Bougainville with a special emphasis on fully implementing the Bougainville Peace Agreement to ensure that the final outcome of referendum on the autonomous region's ultimate political future will be peaceful. June 15, 2019 has been the date set for Bougainville to go to the polls to determine its political future. And given that the next 18 months will be crucial for Bougainville, Chief Momis has called on all Bougainvillians to work together towards referendum and to ensure its success. The Catholic bishops of Papua New Guinea and the Solomon Islands have extended the call by Pope Francis for the world to promote peace. 
General Secretary Father Victor Roche says world leaders like our national leaders in the country must become peace ambassadors. They must be at the forefront to promote peace and goodwill to the people and the communities at large. Twenty eighteen was welcomed with praise of praise and thanksgiving by the Catholic faithful around the world, celebrating the solemnity of Mary, Mother of God, and the World Day of Peace. At St. Peter's Basilica, Pope Francis has prayed for world peace. Pope Francis said that humanity had wasted and wounded the year in many ways with works of death, with lies and injustice. 2017 had been met by war, lies and injustice and he urged people to take responsibility for the actions. Anche questo tempo. What was the most obvious sign of unrepentant and absurd pride? Many of the transgressions had caused human, social and environmental degradation. Was other flagrant indication of this unrepentant and absurd pride? But so are all the small and great offenses to life, to truth, to fraternity which cause multiple forms of human, social and environmental degradation. We want to take it and we must take responsibility for everything before God, our brothers and our creation. General Secretary of the Catholic Bishops Conference of Papua New Guinea and the Solomon Islands, Father Victor Roch, says it's the peace that unites the world and also Papua New Guinea. Uh, calls for peace and also for the Catholics to pray for peace and January 1st the first day of the year is a day for peace and uh, wherever the Catholics are and all the parishes and all the congregations he wants them to pray for peace and we don't need to go too far for uh, whether it is in Syria or Sudan or Pakistan we have in our own uh, land there are lots of places where they are fighting and uh, I hear, if you go to the media, you'd see lots of uh, communities, families, there are uh, uh, injustice, uh, there is no peace, there is, no, uh, there is fight. So it's good that we pray for peace. Meanwhile, the Catholic Church, at every first day of the year, dedicate the year to God, where they also celebrate the solemnity of Mary, Mother of God. Catholic teachings reveal that the Blessed Virgin Mary fulfills divine and human prophecies through her response of yes. Celebrated Christmas. In Christmas, we celebrate God sending his son as a human being. And he needed somebody to cooperate in this plan of salvation. So it is this woman in Judea that cooperated with that plan with God. And so she becomes the instrument. She becomes the mother mother of God. So that's why we are celebrating this. This feast day on January 1st is that Mary, mother of God. Father Victor says the mother of God fulfilled the salvation plan and that's why the Catholic Church recognizes her because of the incarnation. Well, the Catholic Church celebrates and the Anglicans also join us. And it is to celebrate the role of this Virgin Mary as the Mother of God. And it is also, it's a day for peace, not only for the Catholic Church, but also for the world. Now the Trinity, where does Mary come in? The Blessed Holy Trinity, what role does she uh. Holy Mary, Mother of God, uh, which is very meaningful as well because, uh, you, you know, just after Christmas we celebrate the birth of Christ. We also have to honor uh, the Mother uh, who has brought her into the world. And uh, uh, for the Church itself, you know, the uh, Catholic uh, Church followers are, are very strong uh, devotees who always pray to our Blessed Mother for intercession in uh, bringing their prayers uh, to the Heavenly Father. And, and, and I my only advice to uh, the Catholics is to continue to pray uh, for our mother. Fabian Hakelitz, National MTV News.
Now, before we go, a recap of our top stories this evening. Leaders in the country to be peace ambassadors, a call for budget for more inclusive growth, and declining health services to be improved. And that's a new sport and weather for today, Tuesday, Monday, the 1st of January 2018 from the MTV News team. Have a happy new year, pleasant viewing, good night.